the factor of safety is a ratio which to provide additional tolerance on top of the design value of a reinforced concrete element. It is normally used when there is a necessity to provide some allowance to cater for the emergency situations, unexpected loot, misuse or degradations. These factors of safety are normally applied to the load or the strength material. The degree of the factor of safety is depends on how confident of us with the design value and the likelihood of the unforeseen circumstances to occur. Basically, there are three main types of method of using the factor of safety to ensure the structure is safe and workable. This includes the permissible stress method, the loop factor method, and the limit state method. The permissible stress method is basically applying the factor of safety by dividing the material strength with the factor of safety. That means we are assuming the strength of the material slightly lower than its original strength. However, this method has some limitations. It is simple but inconsistent. It is basically based on the elastic stress distributions and not applicable for semi-plastic materials such as concrete. It is not suitable when the deformations are not proportional to the load, for example, for the slender column. And it is unsafe when dealing with the overturning forces. The main reason of this is there is no factor of safety imposed on the forces. As for the load factor method, the working loop is to be multiplied with factor of safety. This means that the design load is actually slightly higher than the actual working load. The limitations of this method is the material strength must be calculated and it does not apply factor of safety to the material stress and cannot directly take into account the variability of the materials. In another word, it do not consider different strength of the material. As you know, even the concrete within the same grade may have different strength on day 28. The strength varies slightly and this is not being taken into account by this factor of safety. Also, it cannot be used to calculate the deflections or cracking at the working loads. As this response is very much dependent on the property of materials. What you can see here, the weakness of this is the advantage of this while the weakness of this is the advantage of this. This do not consider the tolerance for the forces while this do not consider the tolerance at the material aspect. Both had their own limitations. For that, both are no longer in use. Now, the limit state method is more widely adopted. It considers the factor of safety for the working load as well as the factor of safety of the material strength. That means it covers both for the load and also the material strength. This method is more flexible and can be applicable at a wider range.